Please welcome your host, Perdita Felicien. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the 2020 Ontario Coaching Excellence Awards. As you've heard, my name is Perdita Felicien and I'm here on behalf of the Coaches Association of Ontario. And I gotta tell you, I am so thrilled to be your host. Coaches have such a special place in my heart, whether it's Mrs. Arthur's in grade three, Mrs. Hurst in grade eight, Mrs. Masseals in grade 10, Gary Winkler in university. Okay, the list goes on and on. The point is, as an athlete, you never forget a good coach. Before we jump in, I'd like to take a moment to thank the Ontario government for their continued support of coaches all across the province. Thanks for everything that you do. We absolutely appreciate it all. So it's going to be an exciting hour. So if you're watching on your computer, on your phone, on your laptop, buckle up because it's going to be an exciting ride because this week we are kicking off a very special week, the sixth annual National Coaches Week. It's devoted to celebrating people who I believe don't get enough recognition. So let's kick off this week right here, right now. Grab a coffee, grab some tea, whatever it is, we're starting here. So all week, September 19th, the 27th, communities all across our beautiful province, athletes, parents and mayors, you name it, will be showing their support for their coaches. We hope that you show your support online because you want to see it. If you do, use the hashtag ThanksCoach. It's all about finding wonderful ways to recognize the true heroes behind the heroes of sport. So what's on tap? Well, I say we have a great program in store for you today. You're going to hear stories that not only inspire you, but they'll unite us all. And that's something our world can use a lot of right now. Also, we have a surprise at the very end of the show. So you want to stick around for that. You will not be disappointed. Okay, enough of me talking. Let's get to the hardware, right? Let's like hand out the stuff. That's why we're here. Let's start with our very first award. Our first award is the Grassroots Coach Award. We have a male and female winner. Now these coaches really lay the foundation for an athlete's future. They can inject joy, fun, hunger into a budding athlete while also helping them develop skills that they'll take with them for a lifetime. This award recognizes coaches who have mastered this particular art. First up, let's meet our male recipient, Kitchener Waterloo's Craig Campbell. Craig Campbell is a volunteer coach, tirelessly dedicated to the betterment of his community. Starting out as a coach for his son's hockey team 13 years ago, Craig quickly came to enjoy the rewarding experience of coaching. To this day, Craig continues to set that 5 a.m. wake-up call with the Waterloo Minor Hockey Association and his team, the Waterloo Wolves. He believes that he has a responsibility to teach his athletes the importance of respect, accountability and community. His unwavering dedication is witnessed not just in the time spent on the ice, but off the ice as well. He organizes team trips to the local food bank, food drive challenges between teams and free community events to grow the game of hockey at the grassroots level. Results of the game are secondary to this coach. The lasting impact of Craig is felt not just in the hearts of his young players, but also in the countless lives he has helped in his community. The real winners are those fortunate enough to call him dad, friend, colleague, and coach. Congratulations to the 2020 Male Grassroots Coach Award winner, Craig Campbell. And Coach Craig Campbell joins me now. Hi, Craig. Good morning. Congratulations to you. You know, when you heard you were getting this award, I want to know what the first thoughts were in your mind. It was, um, it was a little bit surreal. I actually had uh, one of my players come to my door to tell me that I had won this award and I was just overcome. Um, you know, there's lots of people who are deserving of awards. I never think of myself as being one. I just go out and do what I do. Um, I do it for the kids. 
and, and hope to provide them a positive experience and, and maybe a little, learn a little bit more about life along the way. Absolutely. You know, when I heard that you're a volunteer coach, I'm like, what? He's doing all this for free? But we know it's not really for free, right? There's a passion and there's a love for it. You know, why do you pour in so much into your community? Uh, I believe community builders. I come from a family of community builders um, from the top down and, and we're involved. And I just think uh, it makes our whole community a, a, a better place, a special place. And, you know, for me, my niche is that I can work with young athletes, um, give them a positive experience. I can teach them some skills. But more importantly, I can really show them there's more than just the game. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can tie into the game that they can take back and use in, in their regular everyday life. Absolutely. Okay, you don't know this, Craig, but we have a little treat for you, and I think it's going to make your day just a little bit sweeter. So let's pay attention to the monitor. Craig, it's Miles. I think you're deserving of this award because you did like so much extra things for our team. You got us like to do the teddy bear toss, which was just so much fun. Um, we had the pool party at your house, which was like a ton of fun. The whole team was there. We did the food bank sorting, which um, it was like a lot of fun sorting the food with the whole team. And um, lastly, we did the practice with the Kitchener Rangers with like one time in a lifetime thing, which was really fun. Thanks for being a fun, kind, motivating hockey coach. Thanks, Craig. Coach Craig made learning fun by the bubblegum challenge, the shooting challenge, the coloring challenge, the earning the orange jersey challenge and the scavenger, the scavenger hunt during COVID-19. Coach Craig has also taught us to give back to the community by, by doing volunteer work at the food bank and donating to the food bank. I really enjoyed playing this year and learning a lot from Coach Craig. This is a well-deserved award. Congratulations, Coach Craig. Personally for me, Coach Craig became my friend and somebody who I look up to. He pushed me to be my best and gave me the opportunity to develop my leadership and communication skills and to become a role model. Congratulations, Coach Craig, on this well-deserved award. Oh my goodness, it's taking everything for me not to tear up. And I'm like, you're the coolest <laughs> coach on earth. <laughs> when you hear yeah. that, what's your first reaction? Well, I didn't, I didn't bring any Kleenex the, uh, today, so um, I'll try and get through, but there's some pretty, um, pretty strong young athletes that spoke there. And, um, you know, Alex, who, who was the second speaker, um, touched a really chord with me because, you know, <clears throat> I felt my impact with him when I got feedback from his mom that his teacher um, at parent-teacher interviews at school explained how, how much Alex had changed and, and become more confident at school and was participating more and his grades were increased and she directly correlated that to the experience he was having playing with us and when i heard that like that was lights out for me that that solidifies everything why i do this you know there's so much emotion and passion behind your words and i can tell you as someone who's been there as a little athlete who maybe didn't have confidence you know you are instilling so much in these young athletes and i want to say thank you for all the work that you do you're absolutely deserving of this award and our tribute to your community and your athletes and we were talking a little bit before we came to recording and you say that your athletes pour back into you and they are the amazing ones and you make such a great team thank you coach craig Campbell, and we are so happy and excited for you. Take care. Thank you so much. Coach Campbell is in great company because next up is our female recipient, who you'll see perfectly embodies positivity and passion. She represents Aurora's York Artistic Swimming Club. Let's get to know Alyssa Smith. As a young girl, Alyssa Smith quickly became the athlete of the family, starting with swimming at the young age of four. From her days as a competitive club athlete at York Artistic Swimming to competing for Carleton University, her true passion for the sport began when she started to coach in 2013. Of the novice team she currently has coached the past seven years, many of her athletes have found success on the podium. 
But regardless of her athletes' results, Alyssa's main focus is providing a welcoming, inclusive, and safe space by teaching self-respect and the value of friendship. As a grassroots coach, she goes above and beyond by giving holiday gifts, making team socks for the girls, and ensuring that no matter how hard the practice, everyone leaves with a smile. For Alyssa, coaching doesn't feel like a job, and she wouldn't miss it for anything in the world. Although not every day as a coach is easy, Alyssa remembers that you can't have a rainbow without a little rain. Congratulations to the 2020 Female Grassroots Coach Award winner, Alyssa Smith. And lucky us, Coach Alyssa joins me now. Hi, Alyssa, congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, when I saw your bio pack, I thought this woman loves what she does. Like, it's so <laughs> clear to me. For you, what's the best part of this role? Um, I think the best part of coaching is just seeing the smiles and having the girls achieve their goals and really go after what they believe in. Now, do you think that your experience as an athlete really informs, you know, yourself as a coach? Yeah, definitely. You can relate to the athletes and that like competition uh, mood and relate to their like anxiety and their like energy levels. And you're able to um, help with their uh, technique as well. You're able to give a lot more like better tips like uh, as their like experience. All right. So, Alyssa, we have a surprise video for you. I don't think you know this is coming, but you'll want to pay attention to your screen. Hi, Alyssa. Um, you've been an inspiration to me and you've helped me overcome my fears in the first FINA World Youth for uh, Artistic Swimming Competition in Slovakia. And you've made it fun and also strict, so it was a good in-between. It was like having an awesome coach and a best friend there at the same time. Alyssa, you deserve this award because you are a strong, hardworking, and amazing coach. You see, I'm a very visual learner, and Alyssa gets that about me. That's why she compares my toes to pickles. She knows I would never let my pickles get ruined and wet, so she reminds me to keep my pickles dry in my fingers. Trust me, it works. Thank you for being such an amazing coach this year. I'm so grateful to be able to not only have worked with you, but also become your friend. You've helped me improve not only as an athlete, but also become a better person. All right, Alyssa, I need to find out more about this pickle situation. <laughs> What's up with that? Tell me. Yeah, so uh, like she said, Sloan is a super visual person and her pickles are her favorite food. She'll eat them all the time, no matter the time of day. And it's just always about the pickles. So I had to relate keeping her feet dry to keeping her pickles dry. <laughs> That's it, just work. <laughs> See, I, I get that. I'm a visual learner as well. And like food really like just... I get, I get where Sloan is going with that. Yeah. Totally awesome. All right, so on another note, the Canadian Women's Sport Foundation found that, you know, if you compare boys to girls when they get to their teen years, girls like drop out at a really alarming rate. So I wanna know for you as a guide, as a mentor, how does that really, you know, inform your approach with young girls in sport? Yeah, that's why it's so important to create such a safe space for the girls. You want them to always feel welcomed and want to come back. I know it was hard for me when I was in high school deciding whether I wanted to leave and like continue because it just got really busy with school. And you just you always wanted to come back because your friends were there and it was just always so fun and an exciting place to be. So I think that's why I try to make it so welcoming is to ensure that they keep coming back to us. Yeah, it's clear that you do, because I was watching all the things that you do for your girls. And I think what's so important with what you do is that the approach that a lot of people take with boys, they think that approach will work with girls. And you figured mm -hmm. out that it doesn't, right? Yeah. You really <laughs> have to make that space welcoming. And you have to speak their language. So, Coach Absolutely. Alyssa, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing, girl. I can't wait to follow all that you're going to do in the future and your athletes as well. Congratulations. Thank you so much. For our second category of award winners, the Coaches Association of Ontario has partnered with OFSA, also known as Ontario Federation of School Athletic Associations, to feature some of my faves, teacher coaches. 
All right, let's go all the way back to my third grade year, 1989. My teacher was Mrs. Arthurs. She taught me in gym. She noticed how good I was, and she told me that I was talented. Well, the next year, she made sure that I signed up for the track and field team. I'm certain, had it not been for Mrs. Arthurs, I don't know that I would have been introduced to my sport of track and field, and we know how many doors it's opened for me. In this category, we have a male and female award winner. And our male winner takes us all the way to London, Ontario, to meet Mike Stenning, a dedicated teacher who knows just how to motivate his athletes. London, Ontario, born and raised, coach Mike Stenning has always been one to give back through sport. His first step into coaching was in 1997, when he accepted a teaching job at a local school overseas in Abu Dhabi. After four years abroad, Mike returned to his local high school, South Collegiate Institute, where he has since turned the football program into a perennial OFSA powerhouse. The true success of Mike's impact is measured not by the number of touchdowns, but by the time he dedicates off the field. In 2019, he orchestrated the inaugural United in Sport event, which raised over $40,000 for the United Way. From arranging transportation for kids who live far away to hosting Monday pasta nights for the team, Mike's compassion and dedication to his athletes and community knows no bounds. For him, it's all about cultivating and maintaining positive relationships, Kids he coached many moons ago still keep in contact with him today because for Mike, it's really quite simple. Kids don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Congratulations to the 2020 Male School Sport Coach Award winner, Mike Stenning. And Mike joins me now. Congratulations, Coach Stenning. Thanks very much, Perdita. So, you know, some of my most cherished memories are from high school. I mean, when I think of OFSA, any championship across the board, one of the hardest in the entire country, I'm tooting our own horn right now, right? <laughs> but for you, what's the most rewarding part of being a high school sport coach? Uh, you know what? The rewards are endless. Uh, I, I think the biggest one is watching Kids come in as, uh, you know, little, little mites and uh, growing into young men and young women and, you know, just, just watching them excel and finding what they love. And, and uh, you get to see that journey. A kid grows so much in the four or five years that we have them in high school. It's just amazing to see that journey. Yeah, and I want to piggyback on that because, you know, my memories of, you know, running track in high school in Pickering, Ontario, like our track team had so many different skill levels, so many different abilities, more than I think any level that I've ever been at, you know, since then. And I think for you, how do you motivate an athlete based on where they are, where their skill level are? skill level is because you, know, you some, have some athletes who just naturally have it and others who might need a little bit more, you know, mining of their talents, we could say. For sure. And I think, you know, you hit on a big thing, the abilities. We want to make sure that every kid feels like they belong. And I think a lot of times in teams, you know, kids can feel like they kind of get left out. Well, I'm not as good as him or as her. And, and you know, we try and just make everybody know that, hey, you're as important as the, the starting quarterback. Right. So I, I just I make sure I find a role for everybody on our teams. Right on. I love the culture that you've built. I mean, it's just incredible. High school is one of those times in your life that you'll never forget. For me, some of my most cherished memories. So we've been keeping a little something for you. It's a bit of a treat, I'd like to say. So uh, just pay attention to the monitor, will you? Hey, Coach Stenning. Uh, it's Ethan here. On behalf of everything, everyone um, that you've coached over the years, I'd just like to say congratulations and let you know how deserving of this award you are. Um, you know, you t you've done so much for so many people, whether it was on the field, uh, leading us on the field, leading us in the classroom. Um, we always knew we could go to you if it was for advice, making a big decision, whether it was going to university, um, just to talk about personal issues uh, that we couldn't go to our parents for or something like that. Um, you were always there for us. You've touched so many and affected so many different lives over the years, whether it was football or badminton or track and field or hockey. You have done so much for the South community that uh, this award is perfect to recognize you. So I just wanna say congratulations. 
Um, on behalf of everyone from South, uh, you truly are deserving, and thank you for everything you've done for all of us. Now, that is an endorsement. And I have to say, sometimes you don't always hear that from athletes, right? They don't tell you in the moment or even later on, like, how they feel. Hearing that out loud, what comes to mind? Uh, you know what? It, it tugs at every string that you have in your heart, right? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a little overwhelming for you, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. You know, you, you, you're right. You know, we're in it day to day, and we don't feel the the love you know um you know there's a lot of struggles that we go through on a daily basis but you know to hear that is just reassuring that you know i, I often say i I'd do this job for free if i could afford it you know I, I i love being around kids yeah no it's it's clear how passionate you are so in the four or five years that you do have an athlete you know what do you hope once they've left your field that they take with them uh perseverance and persistence you know you know as being an athlete it's not always perfect and uh, we struggle, we fight, uh, but we got to battle through it. You know, we, I, I don't want to breed a culture of quitters. You know, I want people to, to fight through things. We got to fight for our relationships, fight for our marriages. Everything's a fight and um, uh, not in a bad way, you know, and, and I just, I want them to be able to have the tools and be equipped for the struggle that life's going to face, uh, that it's going to throw at us. Oh, you are speaking my language. I know what you mean by the fight, right? Because the things that they learn on the field of play are skills that they're going to take with them in life, right? Things that yeah. my third grade coach told me, my eighth grade coach told me, I am still using to this day, right? Like never back down, you know, never yeah. give up. Those things never leave you. Coach Stenning, it's been a fabulous few minutes with you. Once again, congratulations. Thank you very much, Perdita. You're welcome. It's now time to honor our female school sport coach who has transformed the lives of thousands of student athletes. Wait till you hear the exact number. She's a master motivator who allows her students to achieve their fullest potential. Here's Canada's Martha Ashfield. Martha Ashfield is the epitome of a teacher coach. During her 32 year career, Martha has not only coached over 3,400 student athletes, but is a dedicated mentor to those around her. Encouraging new teachers and students to get involved in coaching, Martha is able to instill the importance of the student-athlete experience. During the past 16 years at her old high school, Earl of March in Canada, her passion for sport and academics is on full display. She leads the Spark Fitness Program, convenes numerous OFSA events, and leads her association as an executive member. Having worked with teenagers for over 30 years and having two of her own, Martha understands what it takes to keep it fun. During her morning practices, it is not uncommon to see her walk in with homemade jam and croissants for the team. For Martha, it's not the results or the championships that mean the most. It's the camaraderie and the development of the students that matters. As Martha says, Kids will remember their trips on the school bus coming to competitions more than any history test. Congratulations to the Female School Sport Coach Award winner, Martha Ashfield. You know, when I first saw that video, I asked myself, what doesn't Coach Martha do? I mean, she does it all. And what a treat for us. She joins us right now. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you so much. Now, I want to ask, in your illustrious career, where does something like this rank? I think this uh, ranks extremely high in my list of achievements because it represents, for me, like the culminating event uh, after many years in education and sport. So it's sort of like the, the pinnacle, I think. I love that. Okay, reminiscing about my high school days, which was many moons ago. Like, I remember having, like, a lot of characters on our team. So I want to know for you, what's the most challenging and rewarding aspect of coaching high school athletes? I think the most challenging aspect often would be related to people not recognizing that high school sport is so important for uh, youth and... Uh, that supporting high school sport is so important. Um, in terms of the student athletes themselves, sometimes, you know, you have to really try to guide and mentor through not just decisions on the court or on the field, but um, helping them with life choices. 
I think the most rewarding aspect of coaching high school athletes have been all the connections that I've made over the years and then the connections that the athletes have made with one another and knowing that as they move forward, how much that they are going to uh, benefit from sport and what they will carry with them, whether it be teamwork, leadership, resiliency, and perseverance. It's just going to take them, the sport, sport experience just is so beneficial for the rest of their lives. Indeed, it's such an impressionable age and an impressionable part of our development as athletes, but especially as people, as you've highlighted. Okay, we have something in the works for you, so I want you to pay special attention to your screen, all right? Martha, congratulations on this amazing recognition. Uh, first of all, you are not only a truly amazing friend to me and to our whole department, uh, but you are a valued part of the NCSSAA and you are an me coach and a great mentor to coaches all across Ottawa. So Martha, I just wanted to say, you know, not only uh, do we value you, but your community does. You're the person who gives back. You take the time out of your busy schedule to make sure kids have opportunities, whether you're driving in a snowstorm from Ottawa to Kingston to Toronto to Rochester, you know, you're uh, a jack of all trades. Martha, we're so proud of you. Everyone in our department misses you greatly and school hasn't even started yet. Um, but, you know, you're on to bigger and uh, better path retirement. So congrats on that and this award. Martha, a lot of mileage on the car, right? A lot of <laughs> mileage on the car. Absolutely, it sounds like it's worth it. And, you know, what a rave review right there from one of your colleagues. You know, I want to know for you, what is the most you know, rewarding memory in your mind that you can maybe quickly take us through in your, in your illustrious career? Ah, I mean, I think there's so many in terms of uh, just the memories of knowing that kids had a, a positive experience and that they were, uh, you know, enjoying being at school because of their sport connection to school. So, I mean, I mean, to pick one absolute memory is really difficult. No, I understand. It's like people asking me, like, can you tell us which medal of yours yeah. was the favorite? I'm like, I can't. Like, they're all unique. They're all different experiences and different points in your career. So I, I completely understand that. Okay, when you finally do decide to walk away, what do you hope your legacy will be on the high school sports landscape? I think I just hope that I'll be seen as a person who contributed in a positive way to uh, high school sport, both working directly with the student athletes and then also on the organiz organizational side of things um, and committee work, whether it be convening or just working on uh, bettering, you know, facilities for students, et cetera, and just giving them a, a more positive experience. So there was always the two aspects of it, the actual working directly with the kids, but then also the uh, administrative side of it. Martha, you make sport a better place. And can I say, like, I want to have your jam one day. Like, I hope that's in, like, my future, the fact that you can make jam and show up. I'm like, I'm still stuck up on the jam. But anyways, you do everything. <laughs> <laughs> you well, do the truth is, the truth is, I always brought the food, but it's really, uh, the jam is a cooperative effort with my husband, and the kids would always talk about, uh, are you bringing jam this time? So... <laughs> What now, kind you of have jam? to feed. You have to feed kids. Let me tell you. You do. That keeps them happy, right? Okay, I got to ask. Oh yeah. What kind of jam does your husband make? Strawberry. Mm. You, that's a keeper. <laughs> that's a keeper. <laughs> All right, Martha. We've gotten a little bit like off topic here, but lots of fun. You know, congratulations on this award. Much deserved. Thank you so much. It was fabulous meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye. So it's now time to present our good to great category, and we have two winners. Okay, so talent is one thing, we all know that, but it takes more than raw ability for an athlete to get to the next level. It takes their hard work, of course, but I can tell you from personal experience, it also takes a coach who believes in them, who goes the extra mile and knows how to motivate them. I remember being at the OFSA finals for the 100 meters in grade 10 at Centennial Stadium in Etobicoke, and my coach, Miss Masales, really wanted me to do well. 
So she took me to the concession area where they were selling merchandise, awesome merchandise. And so she said, if you can get on the podium, Perdita, I will buy you anything in here. Well, my eyes zoomed in on this puffy white Offsa hoodie. Oh my goodness, I wanted that. $50, that was a ton of money to me back then. And so when I got to that start line, I was so hungry. I was so motivated. I ended up getting a silver medal and Miss Masales, true to her word, bought me that sweater. My older brother ruined it, but that's a whole other story. This next round, we celebrate coaches who have converted an athlete's raw talent into success on the field of play. The search for the best has led us to the sport of karate and Carl Sutton. In a career spanning more than 28 years, Carl Sutton has played an important role in the rise of karate in Canada. With a coaching style described as calm, passionate, and considerate, Carl has developed a knack for bringing out the best in his athletes. His effective coaching style is evident in the success of his athletes who have achieved international success, including in October 2019, having the first Canadian karate athlete ever to win a world championship title. This crowns a long list of podium appearances by his athletes at provincial, national and international events. Carl's dedication and focus to the art of karate and the well-being of everyone he interacts with is clearly visible in his infectious smile. He is an excellent mentor and focuses on the long-term development of his athletes to help them grow as competitors and ambassadors outside of the sport. In practice and in competitions, he consistently emphasizes the importance of preparation and respect for the opponent and for the spirit of the sport. Congratulations to the 2020 Male Good to Great Coach Award winner, Carl Sutton. And you know, I love that image of a young coach, Carl Sutton. I'm joined by the man himself. Hi, coach. Hi, how's it going? Going well. Congratulations to you. And of course, who can forget that World Championship gold medal, you and Ethan Small. What a tremendous accomplishment. You know, I want to ask you, what's your guiding philosophy as a coach? I mean, you've spanned, you know, a few decades now. Um, I, I really... I think it was mentioned there. I, I really try to have fun. One, it should be something that we enjoy doing. So if we're going to put this much time and effort into something and be dedicated that way, you, you should enjoy it. Um, so I, I try to make sure that we have a good time. But I really have a focus on execution uh, and being prepared, and being prepared for different scenarios and, and knowing what you want to do in, in that moment. Um, for me, I try to be the coach that I would want to have and, uh, and in many instances that I wish I had had. So that, that's, that's the things that kind of guide my coaching. You know, for me, I put a lot of weight in what my coach thought, right? And there are times where I felt like he would carry me into a championship when I was maybe not feeling confident. I want to know for you, you know, how do you get an athlete to believe himself so they can go to that next level in sport? Uh, it's uh, it's a tricky kind of uh, it's a tricky kind of situation. So for me, I think uh, I try to. It's about building confidence and building confidence in yourself, building confidence in your training, building confidence in the relationship between you and your coach, so that you can you can have that trust, so that you can um, you can call on your coach to give you the the support as you mentioned that when you're not feeling the strongest. I, I try to make. Um, I try to take things in incremental steps. So uh, if we can have uh, achievable goals and then keep working towards them, um, you build that confidence. And you, you build the confidence in your training. You build the confidence in the things that you're working on. You build your confidence in your coach. Um, over the course of my experience, I try to also, if, if the, a lot of people have like the person that's at the top of their game in, in mind, and oh, I wish I was like that. And I try to humanize those people. Like they are having the same problems that you have. Um, if you, I know it looks like everything's working perfectly for them, but it's absolutely not. And here's some. And if I can find video, I'll try and describe places where they 
they've made the mistakes that you're making. They have the uncertainty that you have. And then if, and if we can get to the point where our relationship is a good one, then I'll say, trust me if you don't trust yourself. I'm not going to put you in a bad position. But I believe you can do something. And then nine times out of ten, it, uh, it, it might work. But on that tenth time where it doesn't, it's okay to fail. Right on. I feel like I need to come out of retirement so you can coach me. Like, I can do anything now, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is so awesome. But I, I think I'll stay where I am. I think I'll stay right where I am. Me too, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a little surprise for you. I hope you're ready. Let's roll the tape. I'm not. Hi, Sensei Carl. So I think you're deserving of this award because you're a great person inside and outside of the dojo. Um, you inspire your students to work as hard as they can and to do their best. Um, and I think you're a lovely person inside and out. Coach Carl has worked with me since I was eight years old. And, you know, if it wasn't for Coach Carl, I wouldn't have made the national team. He's always been there for me, whether it's in training or actually being right with me on the competition floor, being my coach during uh, very important matches. More than a coach, he's more like a, a second father almost. Um, and he always does everything he can for his students. Um, and even though sometimes you don't have your you don't have confidence in yourself he always manages to um bring it out you've been coaching me since i was eight nine you've taken me through multiple nationals you put me through so much hard work and everything i'm just so happy that you got this award and now i'm a world champion you're one of the biggest influences i've had it's just been amazing i'm so i'm so happy for you what a raving endorsement coach carl hearing that out loud what are your first thoughts uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, um, I try. So I, I appreciate that they, they see that I try and I care. And then that's, I think that's, a, it's a, it's important to be genuine that way because people can, can see through it. So I, I do care. And I, I, I actually, so I'm super competitive. I had a pretty, pretty okay competitive career myself. So I, I utilize my coaching as my, my venue to, to kind of still keep my finger on the pulse of things and still be competitive. So when they win, I win. And I, and it's, it's uh, and, but the difference being, I'm just happy to be a part of the journey. And cause there, there are moments where you can only take somebody so far and then somebody else is going to take over or they end up having life changes and, and they, they can only go that far. Um, so I just want to be, as helpful as possible to get somebody to uh, to achieve the goals that they want to achieve. And if I can do that, then uh, I'm happy. I think you're absolutely doing that. And I think also having been an athlete has given you that perspective that I think is really rare at times in coaching, right? You can understand what they feel with defeat and with winning. Mm -hmm. Coach Carl, splendid, splendid getting to know you for these last few moments. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Our second recipient has such a special gift the ability to identify and harness the talent within an athlete. Let's get to know Burlington's Teresa McCola. For the past 30 years, Teresa McCola has played an important role in advancing the sport of trampoline and power tumbling across Ontario and Canada. A former national team athlete, Teresa got her first taste of coaching at age 15 with her local high school. Since then, Teresa has gone on to coach numerous high-level athletes at the provincial, national, and international levels with the Burlington Trampoline and Tumbling Club. From medalists at the Junior Pan Am Championships to a gold medalist at the World Age Groups in 2019, Teresa's impact on the sport is unending. Since becoming head coach, Teresa has doubled her club's competitive program in just two seasons and sent the largest group of athletes representing one club from Ontario to a Canadian championship. Her coaching acumen as a master motivator and technician also earned her the honor of being named the National Junior Coach of the Year from Gymnastics Canada. In practice and in competition, Teresa consistently emphasizes the importance of working hard and if you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything. Congratulations to the 2020 Female Good to Great Coach Award winner, Teresa McCola. And I am joined by the master motivator herself, Coach Teresa McCola. Congratulations. 
Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm already starting. <laughs> You're already, I love it. If I had some tissue, I'd pass it through the screen to you. I, I would appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. This is why we're here. I mean, you, this is a much deserved honor for you, but I have to imagine you're simply doing what you love, aren't you? Absolutely. I just want to give back to the athletes some of the experiences that I've gotten to achieve, uh, achieve as an athlete, and I just want to share it with the kids. So we know that there's highs and, of course, there's low to sport. For you, how do you get your athletes through the tougher times? Because, you know, those setbacks are real on the world, on the, on the journey, you know, to getting to where you want in sport. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of times I just have to think back and remind the kids why we're here. We're here because it's fun and we like the challenge of learning. And that's what the end line, uh, end game is for us, to, to learn and keep, keep learning and keep having fun in the sport. I like that. Keep having fun because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So we were keeping a little secret from you. Uh, there's somebody we want you to hear from. So just pay attention to your screen and, and feel free to cry. It's totally okay. <laughs> I'm going to need some more tissue. <laughs> hey, Teresa. Um, just here to let you know that I think that you're the most deserving coach in the world for this award. Uh, for several reasons, you're always there to push our athletes through and you're always on our side to make us happy and make sure that we're happy and keep us safe like you're not pushing us too fast and just at the right pace so that everybody's having fun and being safe and i just like to thank you for all the things you've done for me especially this last year pushing me through world and helping me get to the uh, level i want to be at so thank you for that three to four years i believe i've been there with my daughter um, what i've seen you do with your athletes including my own daughter has been remarkable um, taking them from an athlete that just started in an interclub program and moving them into a provincial level uh, program and some of your athletes actually hitting national status and winning international competitions is pretty unbelievable, pretty remarkable that um, one person yourself is able to do that. Teresa, you are so loved, you are so admired. There's so much emotion in you right now. Where's that come from? I just, well, you know, I go into the gym every day and I work hard with these kids and, and I just, you know, we don't always hear it from the kids. You know, sometimes I hear it from a kid afterwards, you know, years after they've retired, how much I've meant to them. But I don't always hear it from them on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that just, it's overwhelming. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I'm going to cry with you. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I love it. I love it. I think, when did you know or when did it click for you that you were having that kind of influence on athletes was it in the very beginning are you still figuring that out like when did that really click for you oh it still hasn't like <laughs> like i said i don't often hear about it until after or you know at special occasions like at christmas or or at the year end when you know the kids have an opportunity to say thanks and i have an opportunity to thank the parents for all their support in bringing their kids to the gym and for the effort that the kids put in every day too so it's, it, yeah, not, a, not all the time, not every day, because sometimes, you know, I feel like the kids don't like me that much because I push them hard. But, um, yeah, I just, it's every day. Like, when, it, when they learn something new, especially, then they, and they're excited, that's, that's when I'm like, I know I've done my job. Oh, you are doing a fantastic job. I mean, you're hitting out of the park, to use a, a, a baseball analogy. Teresa, thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time today. It's been just a treat to honor you, and you are a testament to your sport, to your community, and all your athletes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's now time to present the Everyone Matters Coach Award to one special person. You know, sometimes when we think of excellence, we think about winning medals and trophies and ribbons. But as we're hearing, and I've experienced, it's about way more than that. It's making space for everyone to feel like they belong. And sometimes it's believing in them before they even believe in themselves. This year's recipient has influenced the culture of a team and the wider community by truly embracing diversity and inclusion. It's my honor now to introduce you to Toronto's Jason King. Jason King is often described by his athletes as the best coach I've ever had. For the past three years, he has tirelessly dedicated his time to the game of basketball with the North Toronto Huskies. 
the Ontario Summer Development Basketball Program and Stanford University's Girls Elite Basketball Camp. Jason's coaching focuses on empowering his female athletes who he treats as extended family so they can succeed not just in sport but in education and in the boardroom. As a father, Jason uses his coaching to demonstrate that children can grow up in a world where everyone is given equal opportunities to reach their full potential. His commitment to creating a culture where everyone belongs is exemplified through his visiting current and former athletes at their school games, baking homemade cupcakes and championing women's professional sport. His passion for mentoring, instilling athlete confidence and providing guidance ensures that all team members feel supported and included because to this coach, Everyone Matters. Congratulations to the 2020 Everyone Matters Coach Award recipient, Jason King. And Coach Jason King joins me now. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to get right to the point here. What's up with that footwork? I loved it. The dance moves. You know, I didn't even know they had that video. I just saw it now. I think we were just goofing off from practice and someone wanted to know how to do something and you know some of these kids are younger they don't know these dance steps so you know yeah they know nothing together. about the running man right they don't know exactly you got to educate them 100 percent, 100 percent. okay okay i guess we'll get to the to the serious stuff now the real stuff right so right. you know one of my passions is women and girls in sport i know it is for you as well and you know it's almost like Girls and, and women in sport don't get enough shine. I want to know for you, how important is it to really illustrate in your career that what boys can do, girls can do just as well? I think that they need to have the confidence in order to move forward sometimes. You need to be able to say, I can do that. You have role models or people you see doing those things and people behind you just to give you the extra push to hype you up, to lift you up, to say, yes, that you can do that too. I look at today's world and I mean, it is in some respects a man's world and I want them to go out there and change that for the better. So if they can have the confidence and the willpower and the drive to go out there and just be those people who go out there and as I always tell them, they're going to take over the world. Oh. And I expect to see that. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. Yes. Girl power all the way. I love that. I love yes. that. I want to ask you more on a different note. What has coaching really taught you, whether it's about yourself, athletes, sport itself? What have you really learned from it? Um, I've learned patience, for one, because you need to be patient. You're teaching someone how to do something, and you can't be impatient with them. One thing I do not like to see is when I see coaches where a player makes a mistake, it doesn't matter the sport, and that player gets pulled. And there's no explanation of what happened. There's no opportunity to go out there and fix it because life doesn't work like that. You don't make a mistake and get fired. You don't make a mistake and that's the end of it. You still need to be able to go out there and fix what it was. And you need to have, again, the confidence to actually do that. And if you're not empowering these girls and young women to actually do that, you're just doing, to me, you're doing a disservice to them. I think what you're saying is so powerful because I think there's a lot of pressure put on young athletes that they frankly don't need to carry. I think sometimes sport parents can get guilty of that, right? On the drive home, you're maybe chewing them out for, you know, missing a play or doing something that they shouldn't have. And I like what you're saying, having patience with them and just really giving them time to develop their game, their skill, whatever it is. All, All right. right. I've heard a lot about you from your players, and I'm thinking this next, uh, this next video might really make your day. Let's take a look. All right. Hi, Coach. Congratulations on the award. You deserve it more than anyone I know. And I wanted to say thank you for never screaming at us or getting angry with us when we're having an off day, being so understanding and supportive and always trying to talk to us and help us with anything that's going on in our lives. We really appreciate it and we really appreciate you. And I'll definitely be coming to visit you next year. And I hope you come to Montreal as well. Um, so congratulations and thank you so much for the past two years. Coach Jason isn't just there for us during practices and games, but he's also there for us outside of the gym too. He came to our school games to cheer us on during the school year and he's been checking up on us during quarantine and even gave me advice while I was trying to pick my university. 
I'm so grateful to have had Coach Jason as a coach for the past two years. I've met someone that I can count on as a mentor for life. Thank you for everything, Coach, and congratulations again. I'm so proud of you. It is so clear that you go above <laughs> and beyond. I want to know, we feed so much into our athletes and we give them so much. What keeps you going? I enjoy what I do. I enjoy mentoring. I enjoy helping people get to certain goals. And I also enjoy the fact that they're able to get there on their own. I may be able to help them along the way. I may be, to me, I would say I'm allowed to be part of the journey. And what the, this year we had six players who graduated, they're gone on to university. But I was allowed to be part of that journey and I very much enjoyed every aspect of it, watching them grow, watching them get better as players, as individuals, as students. And now they're going on to the next chapter of their lives and I'm actually really proud of them. All right, and it's clear to me how much your athletes admire you. Even though you're not coaching them anymore, they still plan on coming back to see you. Coach, congratulations. And you keep doing that running man, all right? You keep doing that. <laughs> I will do that. Thank you. Congrats. For our next award, we are so, so proud to present this newest edition in partnership with Hydro One, the Hydro One Safe Play Award. And that speaks for itself. Sports should be safe. This award recognizes a coach committed to promoting safety within their team and community. An outstanding coach who promotes positive, inclusive, and safe sport experiences. This year's recipient takes us east, way down the 401 to Kingston and Wolf Island. That's where we'll find Patricia House. Let's take a look. As a coach in the sport of fencing for over 30 years, Patricia Howe's knowledge, passion and dedication makes her one of the top coaches in Canada. Since 2002, she has led the charge for the Royal Military College's fencing programs in Kingston, Ontario. Patricia has been selected to coach numerous teams at national and international events, such as the Canada Games, Junior Pan Ams, Junior World Championships and was selected as the first female head coach for Team Canada Fencing at the 2013 and 2015 University Games. Hydro One believes in embodying the value of physical and emotional safety every day at home, at work and in our community. Patricia's emphasis on safety and commitment to inclusivity is witnessed not just in the gym but across campus and the greater community. Sport has the power to change lives and shape the leaders of tomorrow. Patricia's caring and unwavering approach to each athlete's well-being and safety supports them in a better and brighter future. At Hydro One, Building safe communities is top of mind, and Patricia is doing that every day by creating a safe and inclusive environment, bringing out the best in everyone. Congratulations to the 2020 Hydro One Safe Play Award winner, Patricia House. I tell you, if I was going to list all the things that Coach Patricia has done, I would be here all day, all right? I'd be here all day. Such an esteemed coach who joins me now. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Perdita. That was pretty uh, exciting to watch. Absolutely, for me too. So I gotta ask you, how does it feel to be the first recipient of this award? It's pretty amazing. I um, never thought that I would be recognized for all the different things that I'm involved in, but it's, uh, it's quite an honor. And um, I really do believe that uh, safety is not just our physical aspects, but mental and emotional as well. And that's part of what I do when I'm coaching is try to make sure that people feel like they have a great environment to play sport. What's your favorite part of what you do? What makes this so enjoyable? I think it's the connecting with people. Um, when you're talking to people in the sport environment, you're trying to find out what makes them tick and what they want and what they're trying to achieve and accomplish. And then your job as the coach is to try to guide them and help them to accomplish their goals and their dreams. And I think that's what makes it most exciting and inspiring is trying to help people achieve what they want to achieve through sport.
And that's one of the things I said at the top of the show is that coaches like you not only allow athletes to, you know, chase their dreams, you allow them to achieve them. And those create really lasting legacies in their lives, what they're able to go on to achieve. Okay, we have something special for you. I don't think you're going to see this one coming, but I want you to pay attention to your screen. Hi, Patty. Congratulations on receiving the Hydra One Safe Play Award. So this summer marks seven years that you've been my coach, and I just wanted to say thank you for everything that you've done for me over those past seven years. You've not only taught me how to be a better fencer and a better athlete, but also a better person. And I can say that I wouldn't be the person I am today without the support and knowledge that you've provided me with. Um, thank you so much for creating a safe learning environment at every practice, allowing us to make mistakes and learn from it with your support. In doing so, um, kids who have never fenced, well, you've been able to put them on the podium. And I think that's something truly incredible. Hi, Patty, Jackie here. It's always a great honor to be able to say nice things about you. And it's so easy to. I learned more on the fencing gym floor than I did probably at any other venue in my time at RMC. Uh, because you really build leaders. So when we come to you with problems, you don't take it all on yourself. You push it back to the individuals to try to figure it out if it's within their skill level. And you coach and mentor them along so they can figure that out. So thank you so much for all those wonderful opportunities. I owe you a lot and I wish you a huge congratulations for this great honor. It's such a great um, acknowledgement for fencing and very well deserved. Thank you. Oh, all the feels. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're tearing up. What is your uh, initial thoughts when you see all that? Uh, wow, just um, really touching and um, yeah, really emotional actually. Didn't expect that. You know, something that's really important, you know, I've had, you know, my one coach who took me to the highest level uh, for about 10 years and that athlete bond is so important. You know, when you think about trust and creating safe, environment you know what is something that you know you put at the forefront of that initiative well I think the most important thing is that the person has to know that you're authentic mm -hmm. so as a coach you have to be true to who you are so what you say and what you believe they have to see that in action and they have to see that happen over and over again and that's what builds the trust and that's what builds the respect and that lets people become their authentic self. And I think when people find that, that's how they're able to achieve their goals and to uh, achieve anything, really. They can achieve things that they never thought were possible. I love that you free people to truly be who they are, right? They don't have to hide themselves. They don't have to make themselves small. They can just be who they are supposed to be. Thank yeah. you so much for everything that you've done to make sport inclusive, safe, and a better place uh, for all of us. I have a little 16 month old and you know, I just think of people like you who are just making our province and our country even greater because of all the service that you put in. So congratulations once again. Thank you so much, Perdita. Our next award is the Susan Kitchen Trailblazer Award, named after the founder of Coaches Association Ontario. With her vast background in rowing, she has remained active in the sports world for 35 years and then some. As an athlete, coach, event organizer, volunteer, mentor, I mean, what hasn't she done? This award is given to a coach who can be described perfectly by the word trailblazer, someone who sets a path for others to follow and like Susan, has made a lasting impact on the Canadian sport landscape. This year's winner has been instrumental in blazing the trail in the sport of Olympic weightlifting. Let's meet Scarborough's Hanny Kanama. Hanny Kanama is one of Canada's premier coaches in the sport of Olympic weightlifting. For the past 20 years, Hanny has been a trailblazer in elevating the sports status across Canada as an educator, mentor, event organizer, and as a coach. An Olympic weightlifting champion in his home country of Syria, Hanny and his family moved to Toronto in 1986. And as a new Canadian, he dreamt of a life where he could train athletes in the sport he loves so much. In 2009, Hanny purchased his own facility, Kanama High Performance in Scarborough, where this Olympic weightlifting facility trains novice and experienced athletes and plays host to many provincial championships. 
For Hanny and his sport, this new facility illustrated the popularity of weightlifting in Ontario. From a 650% growth in provincial membership, winning provincial best team awards nine out of the last 10 years and 16 consecutive years of club representation at the national level, Hanny has elevated the sport's recognition to unprecedented levels. Above all, what truly sets him apart from other coaches is his desire to see the sport and athletes achieve the best in life. Congratulations to the 2020 Susan Kitchen Trailblazer Award winner, Hanny Kanama. And look who it is, the legend himself, the infamous Coach Hanny Kanama. Welcome to you, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I'm uh, super excited to receive this award and um, it, it's been an amazing experience so far. I love that. You know, I have to say I'm having a moment here because I've always said that if I wasn't a hurdler, I would have wanted to be an Olympic weightlifter. It's one of my favorite sports to watch. And I know I'm in the presence of greatness with you. Okay, so you've done so much to elevate your sport in our province and in our country. But I want to know, what has weightlifting given you? Uh, weightlifting really created me who I am today and um, made me the person and the coach who I am today. If it wasn't for weightlifting, um, I wouldn't be in the same health as what I am today. I wouldn't be uh, as knowledgeable with what I do today if it wasn't for weightlifting. So weightlifting done for me physically, mentally, it built me to the person who I am today. Yeah, I think what you're saying is how I feel like it, it saved us. Our sport has saved us. All right, you've inspired so many people, and I think it's time that you hear from a few of them. So buckle up. I think Kenny is a fantastic coach, and I think his secret to being such an amazing coach is that he really does it for love. He does it for love of the sport, love of his athletes. He just enjoys so much watching people improve and progress. Hanny, I'd like to congratulate you on a very well-deserved award. Learning sports for me was kind of not an option, but he kind of took me in and told my parents that he was going to bring me to nationals, and they didn't even believe him. <laughs> they told him, like, there's no way, because you know, I, I was kind of like this out-of-shape kid coming from, you know, no sport background. I wasn't flexible. Well, I couldn't do anything and he turned me into an athlete and no one else could have done that. Hanny, I guess what he's saying is you are magic. What you're able to do and bring out of athletes. So I want to know in your career, we have a lot of coaches watching us right now. You know, what do they need to do to be successful? Is there a secret to your success? The biggest secret, I share that with everybody I know and, uh, I share with, the, with, with people who I teach weightlifting to be coaches and seminars to be patient. Um, don't look at one like side, one corner of the picture. We have to look at the whole picture of building an athlete. We can't be up or too much down if there is something went either way. We have to be patient and give your athletes a lot of love and a lot of your time. You, can't, you have to be generous. I you're love a that. If you're person, then you're going to be a successful coach. That is right. And it's about being generous and it's about giving your time and your love. And I feel like our world needs a lot of that. So keep preaching that gospel. Coach Hanny Kanama, thank you so much. And once again, hats off to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And um, I'd like to thank everybody who participated in this award. I really appreciate it. Our last award of the day is a powerful one. It's the Andy Higgins Lifetime Achievement Award, which honors a man who dedicated countless hours to sport through coaching. In 2019, sadly, we lost Andy, but his five decades of coaching made us all know that there truly is nobility in this profession. I had the honor of rubbing shoulders with Andy, who was always quick to unleash his white smile or give me some encouragement at the track. This year's winner has coached for 48 years and has made his own history 
throughout the Canadian sport landscape and the sport of volleyball. He has made sport a better place for generations to come. Let's meet Hamilton's Joss Netterveen. For over 48 years, Joss Netterveen has dedicated his life to the greater Hamilton volleyball community. From his early beginnings with the Mountain Athletic Program to the formation of the Mountain Volleyball Club, Joss has been able to create success wherever he's gone. Not only has his clubs won countless medals, Joss has also created a system that provides youth with the chance to get into coaching. The Mountain Volleyball Coach Certificate Program, which began with only a handful of kids, now puts athletes into mentorship roles. A teacher, coaching facilitator, club president, board and committee member with Ontario Volleyball, Joss has always been able to take on new challenges. For him, measuring success is twofold. He likes to win, and that can be seen in his impressive resume, but he realizes that success is also seeing athletes return every season, continuing to play later in life and giving back through coaching. 48 years and 14,000 athletes later, Joss's passion and desire has never wavered. While championships come and go, the friends, the relationships, and the memories will last a lifetime. Congratulations to the 2020 Andy Higgins Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Joss Netterveen. Wow, what an accomplishment to tack Thanks. on to such an amazing resume. Joss Netterveen, well done and welcome. Oh, great to be here. Great to be here. So I want to ask you, you've probably seen the coaching landscape in Ontario change so much. Do you feel like we're doing enough to really highlight and support your profession of coaching? You know what, over the, the past like 40 plus years, there's been a lot of positive changes. And I think that's come about as a result of us, the, the landscape uh, taking into account changes and demands that are being made by the athletes. So on the positive side, there's been fantastic changes because coaches are now expected to be, and I can only speak for amateur yeah. coaches, are expected to be more professional, more organized, uh, and much more accountable for what they're doing. On the negative side, because sport in Canada and Ontario is taking off, there's a lot of demands that are being made on coaches that are not always fair. Parents want scholarships. They want their kids to get to the next level. So I think for the most part, the profession has really come along, but the demands have changed and fluctuated along the way. I, th I think Canada, Ontario is doing a great job in promoting the coaching programs. Uh, and, and I think, um, they're doing such a fine job, it's finally making its way down to the grassroots level. And I think that's really what you're after if you wanna have productive coaches as a long-term investment. Oh, 100%, and I think that cre really creates a, a foundation and that can continue on this legacy that you've clearly set forth. And so I do feel like with coaches like you, we are in such good hands. All right, on that note, we have someone who has something to say to you. I'm not sure you saw this one coming, but here we go. My dad is so deserving of the, this recognition because for as long as I can remember, and I, I really do mean my entire life, he has committed his life to coaching and the community of sport. I think that his mentorship of young aspiring coaches, um, including myself, through the Ontario Volleyball Association and the Coaches Association of Ontario, um, has, has worked to inspire this entire younger generation of coaches to also want to serve the sport and also want to share the joys of, of what that sport is able to provide us. And I think that that is his greatest legacy and it's a legacy that he continues to build on. Congratulations, Dad, on this recognition. You are so, so deserving of it and I'm incredibly proud of you. Wow, your daughter's love her respect and her admiration just beam through. I have like goosebumps hearing that. When you hear her speak like that, how do you feel? Uh, I feel it's really unfair that you inserted this right in the middle of an interview because I'm getting a little watery eyed. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of, of her uh, 
finishing off her varsity career and having a fantastic uh, athletic uh, history and then stepping out of that and getting in, into coaching. So I think she gets to share. We've done a lot of coaching together, a lot of the experiences uh, that I've had, and now I get to share them with someone younger. It's also good for me to have someone like that who's a bit of a younger buffer because sometimes I can be a cranky old guy and you always need that lightweight thing to sort of balance it. So we've been a good combination. I'll say crankiness has gotten you a lot. So maybe you got to keep <laughs> being cranky. Coach Joss, congratulations once again on all that you've done and all that you'll continue to do. Thanks very much. I really appreciate this and the efforts of the Coaching Association of Ontario and you taking the time to uh, meet with me. Thank you so much. Indeed. Take care now. All right. Ten awards handed out. Ten phenomenal coaches. It's clear to me the depth of coaching talent we have in our province. And to the coaches, I hope you feel the warmth and the love all day today and beyond because you deserve it. And I'll tell you this. As someone who has been through every level of sport, grassroots, high school, professional, Olympic, sometimes what you do can feel thankless. No one's listening to me. They're not doing what I'm telling them to do. And it feels like you're not making a difference. But I'm here to tell you, you are. What you're doing matters, so keep on doing it. I am so thrilled to welcome the VP of Marketing and Communications for Hydro One, Jay Armitage. Thanks, Perdita. It is so great to be celebrating Ontario coaches together. Coaches play such an important role in building safe communities, and coaching is an invaluable gift that these individuals give back to young people. Many of us at Hydro One take great pride in giving back to our communities. In fact, many of us volunteer our time as coaches to local teams across the province. As a company, safety is our number one priority and we are thrilled to partner with the CAO to recognize coaches who foster an inclusive and supportive environment with the Hydra One Safe Play Award. This year, we're pleased to award 10 winners with $500. This money will go towards buying new sporting equipment for their teams from a Canadian business. So on behalf of all 8,800 Hydra One employees, I want to offer our congratulations to all the winners. Back to you, Perdita. Okay, was that not an incredible surprise? $500 for each of these coaches for what they're already doing, it's gonna go far. All right, before we go, we have one more guest to bring to you, the chair of the Coaches Association of Ontario, Barry Shepley. Thank you, Perdita. What an incredible job you've done again today and throughout your entire career, you continue to inspire. On behalf of the board of directors of the Coaches Association of Ontario and all of our fantastic office staff, we want to thank the many partners who've made this day a success, particularly the Government of Ontario, the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Cultural Industries. You've helped us celebrate the most important asset we have in our province, our coaches. We also want to thank Hydro One, who've been a fantastic partner with our organization. You've helped us celebrate and create safe spaces for athletes and coaches to participate in our sport. And finally, and most importantly, to our families, our other coaches who've helped us in our career. As a 35-year coach, I know how many suppers, weddings, and parties I've missed to participate and be a committed coach. I know that each of every one of you have had the same situation. So on behalf of the Coaches Association of Ontario, I want to recognize your fantastic accomplishments. Congratulations on being recognized for the awards. Back to you, Perdita. Thank you, Barry. All right, so I'm so inspired and even more sure that Ontario athletes are in the best hands. And dare I say, like the best hands in the entire country. And as someone who is a product of the system, I'm not only inspired, I stand here feeling like really, really proud of our coaches. So all week long is National Coaches Week. Today, September 19th, all the way to the 27th. Let's remember to celebrate our coaches. And please post it online and use the hashtag Thanks, Coach. And all week long, landmarks across our beautiful province, like the CN Tower, the Welland Bridge, the Mississauga Clock Tower, will be lit up in our coach's honor. All right, that is the end of our time together. Like, it's gone by so fast. Where did the time go? Once again, congratulations to all our winners. I'm Perdita Felician. It has been my honor spending this little bit of time with you for the 2020 Ontario Coaching Excellence Awards. 
Take care, everyone. And remember, thanks, Coach. Thank <music> you.